Hey guys, welcome to another DIY video. I'm putting together another helmet system. I've already done a tan one and it works really well for me and I'm happy with it. But I want to build a black one for some indoor CQB gameplay and my Rainbow Six inspired impression. I thought I'd try a few different things and a few different um, parts for this and give it a slightly different look that looks a little bit more, uh, I guess, police inspired, SWAT inspired. First off, I want to thank Airsoft Megastore for supporting this build. They provided a few of the accessories I needed for this build, including this helmet and some other stuff that's going to come into play later when I'm building the rest of the kit. Now let's start off with the helmet. It's an IBH style helmet. As you can see, it's different than the typical fast style helmet you see. It has no rails. It has a cutout for the ear with a more pronounced temple cover here going down further. And it has a different NVG mount here, which actually is not a good thing for me. So I will be replacing that with a standard shroud so then I could use my GoPro mount with it. So this will be coming off and hopefully I'll be able to fit in the same holes but I got a feeling I'm gonna have to drill a few new holes for this mount. Next, ear protection. Using these 3M Peltors. Uh, these are range hearing protection so they deafen out loud noises but they amplify regular conversation. Similar to the headset I use on my 10 loadout, which is a Howard Lay. This one was just a little bulkier, and if you've played Rainbow Six, or if you like that uh, GSG-9 look, they have those giant earmuffs. So I'm kind of going for that by overemphasizing this part here on the ears. It's just a personal choice. These are a little more expensive, so if you're just trying to be more practical and, and stay on the affordable side, I would say go with the Howard Lays or if your feel allows it, just skip the ear protection altogether. Also, these are more rounded and they fit perfectly into this cutout on the helmet. So when I merge the two together, it's gonna look more like a complete uh, intended helmet system. Moving on to the face protection, I'm using two things that were not meant to be. I've tried a few different things. If you watched my previous video, I got this Shark Raw uh, lower face protection. It's a motorcycle helmet protection. Uh, part of a whole system, but I'm just using the lower because I like how it looks. Again, Rainbow Six, there's a character that was inspired by this. And it's just a cool shape. I really like how it looks and it could be very functional as well. It's solid, flexible plastic. Right here it has some vent holes with a soft mesh, which concerns me. I'm not sure how well this mesh will do in the game. And what I might even do is just tear out the soft uh, padding here and put in some of the metal mesh of a um, airsoft mesh mask to avoid any possible BB intrusion. So originally I was gonna use it with the shark goggle. That didn't work out. The goggle was too fragile, it blew out due to airsoft BBs. Then I was gonna use a, one of those airsoft visors to come down and merge with it. That failed as well. Those things are strictly decorative. So then I figured, okay, let's stick to airsoft. Let's try not to go off the um, script too much and try to use airsoft goggles, everything airsoft um, approved. So I went ahead and got some ESS goggles. Now these are not specifically for airsoft, they're for military and police use. They have the proper rating for airsoft, the NC87.1, look I remember it now. And they're uh, rated to withstand actual shrapnel and I think like a 22 caliber uh, fragment, I'm not sure, but look it up. These things have been used by airsofters for a while, they work well. And these are the turbofan version which means they have a little fan up top here with the battery pack on the back. And when you turn them on, they cycle air through the goggles from the bottom to the top. Anyway, I fog like crazy, and this might actually be a blessing disguise that the shark ones didn't work. I might end up with a really solid system for indoors because that's where the fogging is the worst when you don't have that fresh flowing air. So we'll see how well that works in future gameplays. Now to attach these two together, it's not exactly the simplest thing, but it's very possible. So what I've done here is I've actually attached these using the same system that was intended for the shark lower. It has four prongs coming out of it that would attach to the goggle. Now this goggle knows nothing about this one, so I had to make a couple of holes in the flexible rubber part here. And it, right now it's only attached in two points here right at the bridge of the nose. As you can see, it's a nice merge. There's no gap, it fits in there perfectly. To do that, you have to squish the mask so it's not following the curvature of the goggles, it's more following the curvature of the inside when you're done. This will make the nose a little more compact and it will let you shove it all the way in there for a perfect fit. 
So I'm really happy how this is fitting. It seems to be stable. Those little claws, when they come through, they're wider at the bottom. So once they clear that rubber gasket here, um, it kind of shrinks underneath them and it's hard for them to go back outwards. The problem with this layout currently is the way the mask is designed. It has a really wide lip here, like a shelf that the goggles would sit on. Now, when they tried the Shark Raw goggles on, looking down on the gun, it was a problem. It was too bulky here where you want to get down on the stock. Again, they're not designed, they weren't designed for airsoft, so it was not a concern of theirs. But for me, it's a huge concern. I hate not being able to look down my iron sights or my optic. So what I'm going to do is cut down the lower a little bit. I've put two lines where I'm going to cut. One is a little bulkier where it kind of matches the profile of the goggles. I want it to taper to a nothing at the end here when it gets to the edge of the uh, face protection so then they can lay right against my skin if I push down it when I'm looking down the gun. So we'll see how that first one goes. If it works, then I'll do the same thing on the other side. If it doesn't, then I have a second line that pretty much takes off this shelf. So what I end up with is a goggle and then a plastic piece hanging down that can be molded, pushed, and everything in between. So I'm gonna take this apart, cut it down, and I'll come back with the final verdict. Okay, one side down, uh, I went the more conservative route. That seems to work really well. I quickly realized the line I had drawn was gonna cut off the prong that connects up front, so be sure you don't do that. Um, so I cut it, it was real tough to cut this really sturdy plastic, so zero worries about it breaking due to airsoft. Uh, scissors are probably not gonna work. I managed to use these uh, wire cutters. But it's on here, I tried it on as you saw, as I kept going, I kept trying it, and now I could get down the sides properly. This part just bends down all the way to my skin. And back here I now have a soft foam padding everywhere against my skin versus here where I had that plastic shelf just digging in here, I probably still have a red mark from it. So I'm happy with how it looks. Next step is I'm gonna take it to the bench, grind it off, smooth it out, and permanently connect it so we can be done with the goggle and the lower portion. Next, I'm going to work on the helmet. It's kind of a two separate projects going on here. First is the mask and the goggles, and then we have the helmet, the headset, and the NVG system. What I like about this helmet, it comes with a nice padding here that you could put in later, and that's going to work really well for me. For now, I'm just going to set it aside. I will be using the headset in here, and just like with my previous build, I'm going to go ahead and tie it into the helmet permanently so it's attached uh, via a couple of screws. So then I'm never fumbling with it. It's always in the same place. Everything lines up properly. But the first thing I'm gonna do is take off all these straps. I don't really need them with the um, goggles, lower, and the headset on my head. It's gonna stay in place just fine. What I might end up doing is building a chin strap that just runs from uh, these little protruding sides under my chin and locks in place with the existing hardware. But for now, all this is getting in the way of the overall build. So I'm gonna take off all the straps, leave the foam off for now and keep all the hardware because it's already nice and black so when we go on and either add this on here or some more custom stuff down the road we can use those black screws so everything stays nice and stealth and consistent all right i'm going to take off all the straps and try the mvg mount
All right, so I've done a little work behind the camera to finalize the goggle and lower setup, basically. I've gone ahead and cut the other side to match the one side that I had done on camera. Uh, then I went and kind of smoothed it out with the Dremel tool a little bit. While I had the lower off, I decided to take off the soft padding behind these openings. That soft padding did not give me much confidence as far as BB getting through because the hole is bigger than the BB and if it's a direct hit from close up, uh, it could be a pretty nice shot to the teeth. So I contemplated it, I figured it's a small chance, but I decided to go ahead and replace it with a mesh back here. So I cut out a shape, um, the same, same um, overall shape as the soft padding that was back here by taking that off and tracing it. And then I just glued it in with a hot gun. It's pretty ugly looking back there, but up front you can't tell, it looks very nice and smooth. So that, that took care of the lower, then I went and hooked it up to the goggles like I did previously with the, the two prongs, but I wasn't feeling super confident about that hookup either. There's, it's easy to pop off. I don't think it would come off really, but I figured let's secure it some more. So I drilled a couple of holes on each side of the lower and then I ran a zip tie through there that goes in through one of the vents at the bottom of the goggles. And then to keep that zip tie in, I then take another zip tie and just use the part that actually locks onto the zip tie when it loops on itself. And I run that all the way down to where the zip tie coming out from the lower is and then cut off all the remaining strands. And that basically gives me this dumbbell sort of shape uh, zip tie made out of two zip ties and it's nice because it doesn't ever touch my face, it doesn't get in the way of my vision. It's all hidden out of the way. It's nice and neat, not visible from the front, not felt from the inside, and it holds these together really well. One thing I did find out uh, as I was working on this, this could really work well with a head setup as well. Basically taking this goggle and the lower and then using it with a head setup, maybe a headset, maybe not, whatever you want. It's a pretty cool look and it's very comfortable. So I'm very happy with how the goggle and the lower hookup has turned out. This part is done. I'm sort of gonna set it aside for a second and next I'm gonna work on the helmet. What I'm gonna do is take the headset, drill a hole right in the center here through the metal band. That does not touch the wire so it shouldn't interfere with any other function. And then I'm gonna put it into the helmet and then have a matching hole right in the center here. There's actually, a, I think, a injection molding spot here. So I'll drill through that, hook it up, and now the headset will be one piece with the helmet. This will also help keep the helmet better on my head because the headset wants to pinch my ears. So when I put that on with the helmet, it's gonna keep the helmet down. It won't have such an easy time falling off if it decides to. So after I do that, I might add two more screws on the side here to keep the headset in if it's too wobbly or if it falls out of place. But the next step is to hook up the goggles to the helmet. This is the look I'm going for with the goggles and the helmet. Uh, have them in there and then have the band go around the helmet. But the band, the helmet's very slippery and the band wants to fall off. So I 3D printed some of these pieces and I'll probably put them on my store in case anyone wants to do this exact same build. So I'll probably do three, one on each side and one in the back to keep the band from flopping over the top. And then I'll put in the pads and hopefully then we'll have a finished helmet and I'll come back to update you about it.
Okay guys, we're nearing completion here. I've gone ahead, as you saw me, I drilled the hole in the center here through which I attached a headset. It's pivoting now, but um, it's not really a big issue because the, re the cutouts for the earmuffs here, when it fits in there, has nowhere to go. I added a bracket back here uh, to hold the strap in place just so the goggle can slide off during the game. I was going to do two on the sides here, but I don't think that's necessary. One in the back here is just fine. It gives the goggle a little more flex when putting it on and taking it off. And then another thing I did was shave away down here on the front of the helmet a little bit for the recess of the fan on the goggle because they didn't really want to line up. It's a bump on top of the goggle. So I would want to either slide all over the place or tuck under the helmet, which would give me too much overhang. So just went in with a, with a Dremel, shaped it away. It's not very pretty, but it's not visible and it seems to work really well when they hook up together. So the only thing left to do is add the GoPro mount. I'm gonna do that next. And I'm gonna also add a strap. For the strap, I'm gonna use the, uh, the remaining scraps from this helmet that came with it on the extended strap. What I'm gonna end up with is basically two sides. They'll hook into these holes where a strap used to be. And then there'll be a a little buckle here that hooks them up and there's an adjustment little loop here that I could tighten or loosen this and that will just keep the helmet from falling off my head it's on there pretty tight but if I did a roll or something or fell down really hard there's a chance it could come off so the little uh, neck strap chin strap is just gonna keep it in place so I'm gonna go ahead and get the GoPro mount on here clean up some of these screws that are protruding out paint up this part that I chiseled away just to give it a nice clean finish and I think this project will be done. All right, well, the project is finally finished. It took a lot of hours, if I had to guesstimate, um, probably about 10 hours maybe I put into this, but I was figuring stuff out along the way. So um, you having this guide, it'll probably be a little shorter for you. But since I last left you, I got the GoPro mount on here. Uh, it does not go in the existing holes. I had to move it up about, um, about three quarters of an inch. And the alignment is a little off, it's pointing a little down. I think the slope of the front of the helmet's a little steeper than the more modern fast helmets and um, airframes. So the camera's pointing a little too far down. That's okay, I'm just gonna put a little padding back here to set it a little bit more forward. Uh, I've added a piece of Velcro on the top here to cover up the screw that I cut off and uh, finalized. All the screws I put in, I put blue Loctite just to keep them a little bit more permanent so there's no wiggle out. I had a couple little patches of Velcro on the side to cover up the 3M logo because I think it's a little distracting. And I went in and glued down all the pads inside that they were, they were already preset for that. They had the double-sided uh, Velcro. I just peeled off the stuff now that I'm happy with it, glued it down. So the helmet is ready to go. And one last thing I did was add the strap I mentioned earlier, screwed it into the existing holes here behind the goggle strap and it works really well, it's adjustable, clicks in just like the one on my tan setup and keeps the helmet on really well. On the back I had another strip of Velcro and that covered up the holes that were here from the previous strap system and I added my call sign. So that's pretty much it. I'm really happy with it. The helmet's very comfortable, it's very stable. It goes on real easy, it's a one piece system basically as you can see. It's all in here, it stays together. There's no wobble, there's no shaking, and it's nice and soft inside with the foam pads. And so far, the ESS turbo fans have been working really well. I have not bought them yet, and I've been wearing this thing around a lot. Of course, it's gonna take a real indoor game to test this out, so stay tuned to the channel for that. So let me throw this thing on. You can see the process and how easy it is to put on and how it looks. So I like to use a head sock. It just, it feels good, it soaks up sweat, so you don't have any of that sweat dripping down your face problem. And anything you have laying on you just feels so much nicer when you get that on. So this is the only tricky part, is putting the helmet on. Kind of tilt the goggle forward to give me clearance to get my head in there. Put the headsets out as wide as possible. Slide it on. And slide the goggle into place. And then lock down the chin strap. That's it, I'm done. You can see it stays in well. It won't fall off. 
really easy. And the nice thing with these really slim sides now, as you can see, they're pressing right against my face here. That allows me to get really low on the gun. You can see my reticle here, and this is no riser, so iron sight's not an issue. The only thing I don't like are the headsets, because I'm not a huge fan of amplified headsets, but to go for that look and protection, I decided to use these. And they're nice and wide, and they give you that Rainbow Six wide head feel. So, hope you guys enjoyed this little build. I want to thank Airsoft Megastore for supplying the helmet and the poor mesh mask that I got destroyed for the little filler piece here to keep my teeth in together. Um, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I'll be using this in my next indoor outing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. it off is just as simple it's actually easier than take putting it on Un unbuckle and remove it's hard to beat that as far as simplicity